This lecture is about learning how to calculate the stenotic valve area using the Gorlin method. First we need to define what a gradient is and there's a really good uh, description of it on page 177. But basically a gradient is just a pressure difference um, caused by an obstruction. So there can be a gradient between um, a stenosis, like on either side of the stenosis, or there can be a gradient between a valve and that valve would be termed stenotic. We're going to start with uh, calculating the aortic valve area. Now it's important to keep in mind that a normal aortic valve area is 2.5 to 3.5 centimeters square. That's normal. And so that's basically, you know, the diameter um, across that valve is about 2.5 to 3.5 centimeters, but then of course it's, it's a is a three-dimensional structure, so it would be squared. So 2.5 to 3.5 centimeters squared is your normal size of the space or area of the aortic valve. Okay, it's important to know that when that aortic valve is open, so during systole, um, so during the, there should be the same systolic pressure at that time in the left ventricle and aorta. So this is just saying it in, in a different way, same thing, during systole, or when that aortic valve is open, same thing, there should be the same systolic pressure in the left ventricle and aorta at that time. Okay, so here's the formula to calculate the aortic valve area. Uh, these are the variables that they will have to give you. They will give you the cardiac output, they will give you the heart rate, the SEP, which is the systolic ejection period, and that is the amount of time the aortic valve is open during each cardiac cycle. So each, basically, um, the amount of time the aortic valve is open per beat. Um, K is the constant, and for the aortic valve is 44.3, and then they will give you the mean pressure gradient. So again, important to keep in mind that a normal aortic valve is 2.5 to 3.5. Um, it's considered severely stenosed if it is less than one centimeter squared. So, and then here is our um, example. So again, giving you the cardiac output, the heart rate, the systolic ejection period, and the mean pressure gradient. And then um, fill in uh, the variables, and once you solve, this one comes to 0.48 centimeters squared. So again, this is less than one centimeter squared, so this would be considered severely stenosed. The mitral uh, the formula for the mitral valve area is identical to the aortic valve. The differences are, first of all, the normal valve area for a mitral valve is 4 to 6 centimeters squared, so quite a bit bigger. And um, instead of the SEP, it's going to be, be a DFP, a diastolic filling period. And of course, this makes sense because the, the valves are open at different times, at opposite times. The, the aorta is open during systole, whereas the mitral valve that we're talking about here, the mitral valve is open during diastole. So again, it's the same, it's basically trying to say the same thing, like, um, but just at different times in the cardiac cycle. So this is when the mitral valve is open, so the diastolic filling period, um, and then, um, so that's the DFP for the mitral valve. And then the constant for the mitral valve is 37.7. So those are the differences, but other than that, uh, the formulas are the, st are the same to determine um, mitral valve area.